what we do here is go back, 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 back. back. Hello fellow GBs, this is uh, Catching Fire 3 and I found this because of Quite. So it's Minecraft Love Hunt and if you can't already tell it's a Dream SMP dating simulator. I'm gonna hate myself after doing this just so you know. Because I don't care for Dream SMP. This is more like a meme video. 8:59 p.m. You stretched in your seat in the process of getting ready for a match of high pixel with your friends when you've gotten a notification on your phone. It was an alert from Twitch, your favorite streamers are online. You finished setting up and proceeded to wait for your friends in the lobby, thinking that they were taking quite a long while you decided to put the stream up on your phone. Hi, hello, welcome to the stream guys, I'm here with George and Sabnap, say hi. I don't know their voices, hello. We'll be doing another Minecraft challenge for this stream, this challenge we coded it so that we... Suddenly, their voices began to fade out as your eyelids started to feel heavy. You tried to fight against the urge to shut your eyes, but it was proven futile, futile as you felt your body fall back from your seat, completely blacking out. And then you become Minecraft. You let out a groan as you felt your back collide with the ground. You assumed that you had landed on your apartment floor until you heard three different voices from above you. That was a really harsh fall. Do you think you're okay? Know. They're okay? Sorry. I don't know, Dream. Why don't you try landing a 140 block fall with no MLG? Dream? That name sounded familiar. That sound effect ringing in your ear was just as familiar, too. You begin to stir awake and attempt to open your eyes. Wait, guys. Shh. They're waking up, I think. Oh, no. There they are. Whoa, you can look around, too? Okay, that's pretty cool. You were met with three familiar faces looking down at you in concern. Hey, are you okay? Here, let me help you up. No, don't touch me. Oh god. Oh god, it's Minecraft. You were brought up to your feet by the tall well, of course it's Minecraft. By the tall male in front of you, your arms immediately flailing about you as you try to regain your balance. You then began to pat the dirt off of your pants as you come to the realization that you were surrounded by three of your favorite content creators. You're probably so confused right now, um, I go by Dream, what's yours? What is your name? Well, if we're going by Minecraft names, I have to do my Minecraft name. You introduced yourself. Dream oh. grins. Catching Fire 3, nice to meet you. Dream was then pushed over to the side by a, that's not how you spell brunette, I don't think, who had a bandana tied around his forehead. He seemed to be a really energetic person. Hi there, Catching Fire 3, I'm Sapnap. That's all I could think of. Sapnap, you didn't have to shove me. You just weren't quick enough to move out of the way. You bashfully nodded and waved back to the two as they both began to bicker. You heard a sigh coming from your right and looked towards a shorter brunette. I'm really sorry for these two, they're all completely normal. Hello. This is all completely normal. I'm George. Pleasure to meet you, Catching Fire 3. Just how it's written is how I'm doing their voices. George then cleared his throat loudly enough for the other two to hear. So, what's our plan now? Obviously, we're stuck in a Minecraft world, but we can't stay here forever. Flustered Dream and Subnap had fixed themselves and focused on the situation at hand. What? They don't even look like adults in this art style. They look like little kids, and I don't like that. How do you think we can get out of this? Any ideas? It seemed that they have discussed this before you had arrived, confirming that everyone from the, was from the real world and was not a bot built into the game's code. Seeing you fall from apparently 140 blocks high also served as enough evidence that you two were real to them. A moment of silence had passed for a while as all four of you tried to think of a solution. You free the end? Everyone turned to dream. The what? I'm done doing voices right now. The end. We find the stronghold, beat the ender dragon, and free the end. Just like how we usually do our challenges. I'm not sure if this will help us get back, but it's worth a try, right? But then this is us, dream. We're not our characters anymore. We're actual people stuck in their places. We can't just die and respond zero hearts and we disappear. How are you so sure about that? We don't know if that's true. Sabnap out of the blue proceeded to punch George. 
A glimpse of George's health had appeared on the top of his head for a split second with his last heart split in half. Jim's face faltered at this. Of all people, Sabnab, you really had to choose. So, if we're going to finish the game, we all have to be careful. You nodded along, gazing up to see that you had half of your entire health bar down due to your fall earlier. Alright, then let's split up since it's almost not done. I'll go mine for oars. George, you go get us as many wood as many wood as you can. I wonder if he actually talks like that. Subnut, find us a private place to reside in for now. Okay, I thought I saw uh, a village in the background somewhere, but there is a cow. So they must have been playing Minecraft when they took this screenshot or something. As three of them went their separate ways, you were left on your own. You wanted to help out too, so you decided to get wood because I want to help. You decided to walk towards the path George had taken, one leading deeper into the forest biome. Catching Fire 3! So you decided to catch up with me. You nodded as you went to the opposite side of the tree he was getting materials from starting to break it down. I'm so glad you went with me, this way we could get more supplies a lot faster. You smiled at him as you went to another tree to gather more materials. After a bit of silence passed between you two, George spoke up once more. So, you play Minecraft? I'm pretty sure you know of us. Is there anything you like to do in particular that got you into it? Okay, first of all, of course they'd know who you are. Because George, George not found Dream, you know, Sapnap are way too popular for that not to be the case. I didn't read what that said, did I? I'm quite interested in coding, actually. I just happened to like the game, just, let's just, okay. I'm quite interested in coding, actually. You haven't exactly had any experience in doing it per se, but you would like to tackle it someday. Oh wait, I should probably quick save. And Minecraft seemed like a good start for you, a blank slate for different mods you can create. What the fuck? Why, why is such a sensual look on him? Coding, huh? Cool. Maybe once we're out of here, I can try teaching you the basics. I know quite a lot about it. Hearing him sound so excited, it makes you look forward to getting out of here together even more. You bit your lip in an attempt to fight the flesh that had tried to rise to your cheeks. I have a feeling this is all a dream that he's having because he fell asleep and hit him his head. Once you feel like the amount of materials you've gotten was... Enough, you peer back and see George waiting for you to finish up. Let's head back, yeah? You nodded as you both made your way back when Sabnab had called out. Guys, I found a ruined portal! The both of your heads snapped towards the direction of where Sabnab's voice resonated and bound over to his area. All I can think of is they broke their necks. I wonder if the guy who made this game did get the screenshot he made this to look exactly like one, but so Nice find! As everyone reunited, they had huddled around the ruined portal. Dream and George had exchanged the materials they have obtained, successfully creating a crafting table. Sorry, I'm just kind of tired today. Dream creates enough stone axes and pickaxes for everyone to be able to defend themselves when needed. Stone axe. What about swords? <sighs> George then sashes the crafting table in his inventory. Now, let's see what the chest has in store for us. He motions for Sapnap to take the lead. The brunette bounds over to the chest buried in between the nether egg, opening the lock up and revealing the items locked in. Oh, is that two obsidian? I can't tell. So? What do we got? Um, a gapple? Oh, I hate when people call it that. It's a gold apple. I don't care what you say. This is so fun and steal a few gold ingots, an intended golden helmet, and some obsidian blocks. Oh, you need one more. Sabnap then quickly sweeps a hand into the chest before anyone could speak up. I called dibs on the flint and steel. Of course you would. I'm guessing he's the arsonist of the Dream SMP. George rolls his eyes before approaching the chest. Then I'll grab the helmet. Dream was the last to approach the chest, bringing out the two remaining items. He holds them both in his hands as if to weigh his choices. Here, catching fire three, he tosses the gap with golden. Why did. Now I'm starting to say, golden apple to you. 
You glanced at it for a second before looking back up towards the blonde. He simply smiled back at you. You'll need it more than I do. Besides, these will be handy later on. You were about to speak up when the sound of groaning was heard all around you. Oh no, zombies. The three of you had lost track of time as night came upon all of you. Numerous mobs have begun to spawn. Guys! There's a village down here. Find a one block hole. That's my marker. Upon hearing this, Dream had already sprinted ahead, leaving everyone else to follow his lead. As you all ran, you heard a yelp from someone behind you. Ah! George! George died. George was wrestling with the zombie. Sam Knapp also turned his head around and immediately wielded his axe. As you looked behind the younger brunette, you spotted a creeper approaching his way. Uh, okay, it was timed. You were much closer to George, so you sprinted towards him while Sam Knapp turned around to the hissing of a mod behind him. You wielded your axe up and high before striking down a crit onto the zombie that had grabbed a hold of George. Doing it three more times, the mob then disappeared in the smoke and a few orbs of EXP. Or XP, I should say. George, seemingly out of breath, appreciates your help. Thanks, Catching Fire 3. Dream turns around. Are you guys okay? All three of you nodded in response. Okay, so nothing with the creeper? I see. I see. Plot hole. Alright then, come on, we're almost there. You all hobbled over to the nearby village. Dream had shoved a random door open and ushered all of you inside, breaking any lever or button nearby the entrance to ensure that no other mob could get- That's not how that works. He really didn't have to, but it was better safe than sorry. Dream then sighed as everyone attempted to catch their breath. Anyone hurt badly or anything? You, George, and Sapnap, and Villager glanced at each other for a minute before shaking your heads all together. Dream sighs in relief before glancing at the iron golem doing its job to protect its village through the window. Well, it seems like we're in a library. Might as well make the most of our time here and rest up until daylight comes back. Dream and Sapnap nodded at this, but did I know? Because I don't believe in this. No, I, I don't fucking know. Dream continued to stay nearby the door, keeping watch of the mobs outside. Sapnap had decided to sit up by the staircase to the upper floor of the library. George had already gone up to check out the many books on the shelves. Wait! So they're able to take the books out because they're real people. Okay, I see how it is, game. Or, yeah. You took this as a, as a time to breathe and venture around. I want to know more about books. I want to know more about books. You decided to head upstairs. You wanted to see what the library had in store for you. In your footsteps approaching, George sees you standing at the top of the stairs. Catching fire three. He smiles at you as he puts a buck back in the shelf. You questioned him as to why he did that as he seemed quite interested in it. Oh, it's um, it was nothing, really. You don't buy it one bit, but you let it slide. I would have loved to know what that book was. He st maybe it was erotica. You stood next to him as you peered at the multiple books with enchantment table language engraved on their spines. Your fingers brush against the leather before George clears his throat. So, books? You like books too? So, books. Yeah. Uh, I enjoy reading a lot. I mean, that's true to me as well. You like the way books open up a different world for you to discover and conform to. You smile at probably the countless books you've decided were your favorite ones, whether they were just a standalone or a long series. Wait, how was I able to glance? I don't know. George smiles. You think that too, huh? It's just kind of like here too, opening portals, finding different parts of its universe, understanding its lore. I'm going to end up with George, aren't I? He then catches himself from rambling further, his face tinging pink. I was hoping that I could go with Dream because, you know, memes. Sorry, I th think I've said too much. You reassure him that he hadn't, you tell him that you enjoy hearing him talk about the things he's interested in. He looks a bit shocked at your response before settling on a, sm settling on a smile. You're great company, Catching. I know, some people call me catching or fire or catching fire, you know, they usually, you know, shorten it. Guys, sun's out, let's go and loot this place. 
Everyone assembled themselves nearby the entrance of the library. Main focus is to find more iron. If you guys find enough, craft a shield for each of you. I'll look for a furnace and smelt the ones I've mined. I'll keep an eye out for more too. And look for food too. We'll be needing more of it later on. Everyone nods and headed off in various directions. Where am I gonna go? You enter a nearby house to be greeted by a villager who stares at you for a moment before leaving the structure. You shook your head at the random encounter before climbing up the stairs to see a chest in the corner. Brad, two iron, and an apple. Opening it, you were greeted by four pieces of bread. Four piece of bread, sorry. Two iron ingots and an apple. Smiling, you stash all of them into your inventory before heading out. You met up with Sapnap and George as they both emerged from a nearby house. George approaches you. He gives you a shield and an iron pickaxe to replace your stone one. You noted that he was able to make enough for everyone. Turning around to the sound of footsteps approaching, you see Dream returning from with more iron ingots and a bunch of buckets in his hands. How did they find this much iron in a village? I don't think you can find that much just by going in random directions. Maybe two, three houses would have a chest or something, but I don't know. George also made his way to the blonde, handing him his share of the new iron assets. Dream nodded at him in thanks. Nice! Alright, Sapnap? Huh? How many obsidian blocks were in the chest? Sapnap, Sapnap pondered for a bit. I, I think there were two. Jim glances down at the buckets he had with him and handed a few over to George. Alright, George, you go and get water. I'll go ahead and get some lava. Sapnap, I'll stay here and light the new portal up. You stay here and light the new portal up. Dream bounds off to the opposite direction while George walks to the nearby brook. Sapnap walks down the path towards the ruined portal area. I can't follow George again, can I? No, I'll follow Sapnap this time. You decided to walk down the path from snap, uh, snap trap, yeah, sap nap to the portal. He nods at you whilst you take a seat on a nearby grass block mirroring him. You both sat in silence for a bit as you waited for the others to return. After a while, Sapnap speaks up. His face seemed serious and it made you worry quite a little bit as you're, no, quite a bit as you're much used to the cherry expression that had stayed much more constant on his features. What was that? So, what are you looking forward to? Like, what do you want to get out of this? You take in his question and ponder for a bit. Experience would be useful, something other than normal. It wasn't as if you enjoyed the idea of being stuck in some sort of virtual reality, but sometimes you like to look on the brighter side of things. I think it's the music making me tired. Besides, this could come in handy for future situations with it exercising your patience and all. Sabnap seemed to be in thought. No, stop doing that. As much as I l love Minecraft and all, being stuck here sucks. I just wanted to go back home and I just want to go back home and be in my bed, stay on call with the other two. But you're right. Maybe I should just think more positively about this rather than to think against it the entire time we'll be here. You agreed. You can't stay upset forever, or else you wouldn't reach a clearer solution. You received a calmer look from the brunette. He continues to toss his flint and steel up one more time until you both return, return towards the sound of footsteps that were arriving at your area. You guys got the stuff? Everyone raises their needed item, confirming that they all have what they needed. Jim smiles at this before beginning to call George to his side to help complete the portal altogether. You stood by the side of, as the other... Whoa, that, whoa. You stood by the side, at, you stood to the side as the other, the three other members had grouped up together to speed up the portal building process. Once they were all finished, Sabnat flicked the stone in his possession and flared the new nether portal to life. The four of you grinned at the success of your first half of the plan. Sabnat then glances around to everyone else. So, is everyone ready? Dream points to George. Wear your helmet, George. Oh, yeah. George quickly applies the helmet and gave out a thumbs up. We're, we're ready. He doesn't even have it on, though. Sabnap nods and you all usher over to the line of blocks right before the portal. I thought, I thought because he disappeared, he just put it on. And then it would be a different thing. Wait a second. 
There's, they went to the ruined portal. Just to make another portal. Just so everyone knows, I don't actually know how a ruined nether portal works. So, don't blame me for this. I don't know if you can use one as a portal, but, uh, you know, uh, just tell me in the comments, I guess. Wait a s- oh no, because you can only use a diamond pickaxe and I haven't found diamonds yet. Okay. You inhale deeply and exhale slowly and attempt to calm your nerves before entering the portal. You peer over to the side to see the other three doing the same. Dream then began to count. On three. One. Two. Three! A sapnap shouted all four of you had jumped into the portal at the same time. After feeling light for a split second as you thread through two different worlds, you feel gravity pulling you down as you enter a warmer surrounding. You decided to take a step down from the obsidian platform with the disorientation catching up to you, you had fallen onto your knees and clutched your head. Teleporting from one world to another isn't exactly as fun as it seemed. The other three had simultaneously ground as they landed. Yeah, hopefully we're never doing this again. I second that. Shaking his head, Dream stood up and battered away the netherrack dust that had gotten all over him from the fall. He and the other two had followed his lead and did the same. Dream gazes around the view of endlessly dripping lava, trying to let the scene sink in. The nether. You can hear the dread in Dream's voice, and you were about to approach him about it before he turned around with a stern look on his face. If you like this video, leave a like, comment down below if you want to see more, what you want me to do next, subscribe if you're new, and may the odds be ever in your favor.